Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're going to continue learning Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2, and this episode will really focus on leadership and headquarters, so your generals and the headquarters that uh, where they reside and how they command their units. And so let's jump right into it. And I always love the leadership uh, tutorial videos because I get to bring out the pencil. Uh, and in this, with <laughs> in this, with this pencil, we're going to map out the leadership structure and talk about it just for a minute. I think it's very important when you start this game and when you start playing it to start to get in your mind how the leadership structure works. Now we're gonna be talking about the axis here. We play the axis generally, We've well, we've always played it in this game. We will eventually play the Soviets and I may put out a companion video about the Soviets, but this is gonna focus on the axis and specifically the German chain of command and it all starts at o k h and this really will be ground unit focused uh the air unit command structure i went over very extensively i feel like in the air uh section of this tutorial so let's talk about ground okh is the big overall command it is the main headquarters. It is started off being led by Franz Halder, who's not a very good general. Uh, well, he's a field marshal, actually, but we'll talk about that momentarily. So you have OKH, and OKH underneath it com its command has army groups. In the German case, it has army group north, okay? It has army group center, and it has Army Group South. So three main areas of command. Now later on, if you play on long enough, Army Group South you know, gets split up into two, into A and B. Uh, but for now, let's just say we've got three Army Groups. That's how it will be, I think, until late 42, maybe early 43. Uh, Army Group North, Army Group Center, Army Group South, okay. Now, underneath these army groups, you have armies, army headquarters. In the north, you have 18 and 16. In the center, you have four and nine. And in the south, you have, oh, uh, my brain froze for a second, six and 17. Um, you do have another German army in the south, the 11th, but it reports to the Romanians. Uh, we've been talking about that a little bit in the Let's Play. Uh, that's just how it's set up. They, they report to the Romanians, okay? In addition, each one of these army groups, okay, so now we're on the army level. Each one of these army groups also has either one or two panzer groups, all right? And think of panzer groups just being like armies. They're on the army level. So infantry is the 18, 16, 4, 9, 6, and 17. The panzer groups, though, are on this level. And in the south, you have first panzer group. In the center, you actually have two panzer groups. You have the second and the third. Whoa, things are getting tight there. All right. And in the north, you have the fourth. So pretty easy to remember that. They just go backwards from you know the top to the bottom. Instead, they go bottom to the top. One, two, and three, and four are how the panzer groups are numbered. They are on the army level for command. They report directly to their army group headquarters, okay? Underneath that, you have the uh, lowest level of command or headquarters in this game, and that is the core headquarters okay so this is army hq you have then core hq and these are the hqs that are closest to your divisions all right and they directly command your divisions and i'm not going to write out all these numbers if you want to see that you've come to the wrong place my friend um now let's click off of here for a second so you know the core it goes down to the core headquarters level. Uh, 
Actually, before I get off of this, let's then talk about who can command these things. All right, so each of your generals in the game has a maximum command of what it, you know, what it is made to command. So a field marshal is made to command OKH. All right, now that doesn't mean a field marshal can only command OKH, it can go down two levels. So a field marshal could go down to the army group level or the army level, all right? And it could go up one level. Well, in this case, there is no level unless he's taken Hitler's place, right? Uh, and so these commands up one level or down two. But if they go up one level, and we'll see that here in a second, they may get a ratings hit when that happens, if they get promoted to some place where maybe it's a little, you know, too much for them. The next level of general for the Germans, and I'll say it how they do it, General Oberst. I didn't say that great, but that's okay. General Oberst. That is, so if you think of the field marshal being like a five-star general in American parlance or British parlance, uh, the general Oberst is like a four-star general, and he is made to command army groups. Again, doesn't mean he has to, but if he moves up, he may get a ratings hit, uh, but he can also move down, all right? The next one, army level, is just a general, simple, there's nothing else to go on to that. It's just a general. And then down at the core level, it's what they uh, called a GL or like a lieutenant general. Think of it that way. All right. And so this is the German command structure. All right. Uh, oh, one other thing I do want to put here is you can tell this on the top of the headquarters because OKH has five X's on the top. And that is the top command, obviously. An army group has four X's on the top. This is just their designation, their symbol designation on top of the counter. An army has uh, four. Wait a minute. Hold on. This also has five. Uh, this has four. And your cores have three and we'll go look at these in just a second um so these are the designations core headquarters will have three x's and then when you get down to divisions now those aren't headquarters those are your combat units they have two x's regiments or parts of divisions have just one x okay and so that's how that moves up there actually let's go look at okh really fast because i know okay whoa get on the mini map my friend you're gonna give me a headache um uh, here we go, here we go. Let's get to the north. So you have Army Group North here, and you see the five X's across the top. You can see what it commands. Let's get out here. Fourth Panzer Group, the four X's on top. It's very similar. A Panzer Group is just like an army. Uh, speaking of which, you have 16th Army here. It's got four X's at the top, and that's how that works. Let's go back and look at OKH. Where does that have six X's? Nope, it stops at five. So OKH has five, and so do the army groups. Uh, okay, I guess, you know, they're just like, that's enough X's. You get no more, my friends. All right, now, how in practicality does this work? Well, let's go out here to a core headquarters, all right? Uh, let's just pick this one. This is uh, commanded. This is the first core or one core. First core, we'll call it. People get mad when I call it one core. This is commanded by Walter Modal. All right, you see the commander, the picture over here. You can left click on the commander and go and look at all of his stats. And we'll talk about all these here in a moment. Uh, you could also right click on the first core and you see Walter Modal right here and you can bring up his stats from there as well. Um, okay, so I've got Shift-Z on, so you can see in light blue everything that Modal commands or his core headquarters commands. It's not just him. There's a lot of support units in here, uh, and these support units... Now, don't be confused. I'm not talking about combat support units. If we right-click on here, you will see the elements that make up the headquarters, and it's a support 
element, all right? Those are not support. These are support units. When you have battalions that you can attach and, you know, push down into battle, et cetera, et cetera, that is support units. I guess the better way to call this then, let's right click on this again. When we go back over here is support elements and you need these support elements to support the logistics and all of the things that go into running an army getting the food and the bullets in get you know getting it out to the divisions uh the communications the you know all of the things that you th would think of a of a command headquarters all of the people on the ground that have to be there to take care of getting those divisions ready for combat all right so it's support elements all right but you can see here that modal and this headquarters are commanding these divisions right and in this case it's six divisions now that is because 18th army that modal is a part of is an assault army which ups the number of units he can command but we'll get to that in a moment so you've got your core headquarters in this orange line will go back to who it first corps directly reports to in the chain of command in this case it's 18th army and if i click on directly on 18th army you can see the light blue also goes right back to modal right you know orange back here to who commands it the command down the blue all right and so 18th army is that next level up so as i talked about core headquarters here up to the army level and once again we'll get on 18th army there is 18th army and that is commanded by george von kuchler very prussian name there now you see that average 5.4 that is an average of the seven stats uh, that he has well i say seven and that's how it used to be well okay it is it's seven uh, and so they just average all of these together. Now, in the first game, they eventually bowed to pressure and got rid of the air rating because they said, well, that, you know, people said, hey, that doesn't matter. I mean, Von Kuchler is obviously not going to run an air command. Get rid of that for the average. I'm sure they'll patch that at some point. For some reason, that really bothers people that that brings down the average. So uh, Von Kuchler here leads 18th Army. Okay. And you can see all of the core headquarters 18th army commands we already saw a uh, modal we see here uh this is 38th corps and this is my guy von chapuy frederick von chapuy terrible general for the german army uh and so he's sitting here with nothing to command i made it that way by making this an assault army i put all of his stuff up here with modal uh 23rd Corps, okay, 23rd Corps is Sch oh, Schubert, 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 again, not very good, we took him out of command, and then finally over here, if we get on 50th Corps, this will be Lindemann, I do believe, yeah, George Lindemann, a pretty darn good general, and he is reporting back here to 18th Army as well. All right, and so core, these two cores that have divisions underneath them are reporting to 18th Army. So are these two. They just don't happen to have any divisions underneath them because of my supreme leadership making it so. All right, so 18th Army. All right, let's trace that back. Where does that go? Army Group North. And Army Group North sits right here, just a little bit back from the front. And it traces straight out to 18th Army. And Army Group North is commanded by Wilhelm von Lieb, who's not great. He's not terrible. Uh, he's not very good for morale. Uh, people don't like the bald head, I think. He, he kind of looks like, I don't know, well, I'm not even going to go down that road. He, he looks, he looks kind of mean. Uh, maybe that's why he hurts morale. Uh, anyway, 477, a 7 infantry. We'll come back again and talk about what all of that means but he is the commander of army group north now army group north commands 18th army directly it also commands fourth panzer group right this is at the army level fourth panzer group is run by eric hepner and then it also well wait a minute let's follow these blue lines it also commands 16th army all right and 16th army is commanded by ernst bush 
Okay, what else does it command? Where are all these other blue lines going? Well, as you can see, some railroad repair has come out of Army Group North. We, we, we talked about that in the logistics section. Uh, he also commands this security force. Uh, now, these will be removed in turn seven, withdraw seven, and evidently the headquarters goes with it into the partisan or the garrison box uh, to handle partisans and garrisons. Um, and then he's also got a railroad unit all the way down here. These are those secondary repair, uh, railroad repair units that we talk about. Now you see his orange line, where do we go? OKH. So OKH to Army Group North, Army Group North to 18th Army, 4th Panzer, 16th Army, and then various other things. But for purposes here, really focus on the three main army level of uh, army levels that it that uh, Army Group Center commands: 18th Army, 4th Panzer Group, 16th Army. Those are the three main ones. Then the Army commands core headquarters and if we went and we click on 16th army you can see it's set up exactly the same way these core headquarters report back to the army headquarters okay and so he's got direct command of these cores all right now let's talk about being in command and out of command and for these purposes, just think of it in a big general way that to get certain bonuses and certain good things to happen, that things have got to be in command, okay? Now let's go click on this division, the 254th Division, all right, Infantry Division. It reports to First Corps, okay? And then we have this two of five. What does that mean? It means this division is two hexes away, any way you count it, from this headquarters. It's two hexes away, that's the two. What does five mean? It means this division has got to be within five hexes of its core headquarters to receive the various bonuses, perks, add-ons, additions, good things, generally speaking, from being in command or getting leadership from this headquarters. Now that can be being better in combat, getting more supply, having more movement points. It's that big bundle of good things that you get when you've got good leadership, all right? And so divisions here have got to be within five, divisions have got to be within five hexes of their core headquarters to be in command, all right? Now I'm gonna throw a little wrinkle at you here. We've talked about, and if you've played the game a little bit, you'll realize sometimes units start out not directly reporting to a core headquarters, all right? Sometimes they start off reporting directly to the Army Headquarters, or even the Army Group Headquarters. Now, if that is the case, they have got to be within five hexes of who they directly report to, to get their leadership bonuses, all right? So, if there are certain dice rolls that happen with respect to leadership, whether it be, you know, initiative, things like that. If those happen and this is directly attached to or its direct commander is 18th Army, 18th Army would have to be out here somewhere within five hexes for this division to get that bonus, okay? But as a general rule, so, well, let's make that two general rules. So as a general rule, you always wanna get divisions underneath core headquarters. That's for a few different purposes. This being one of them is they have to be within five of its their direct commander to get some of those perks and bonuses, okay? Um, I'll tell you about some of the others later. Let's just kind of forget about that for a second. All right, because we're gonna move up the chain of command. Now, core headquarters here, 
have have got the same idea but they've got to be within 15 of the armies so armies and i'm kind of doing this backwards let's actually do it you know going down armies have command a command radius of 15 hexes and maybe i can best show this down here with 16th army and let's click on 16th army and you see some of these headquarters are getting a little far away from the army headquarters and so let's go click here and you see 13 of 15 so if we counted this out it would be 13 hexes away from the army headquarters it can only be 15 away to be quote unquote in command all right now armies if we click on 16th army um and let's do it backwards here again. Let's go back to its direct commander, Army Group uh, North. Army Group North has a command radius of 45. And so, you know, things can really get stretched out here away from it. Up to 45 hexes. In this case, 16th Army is only 14 hexes away. All right, so it's well within command. And, you know, ultimately we can go here to Army Group North and you can see OKH has a command radius of 90 hexes, a big, big radius. Uh, Army Group North is only 21 away. It's easily within command. So once again, let's go down the chain. Uh, and I like to just say these over and over so they get ingrained in your head. OKH has a command radius of 90. You can then see that when you click on something directly under its command, in this case, Army Group North, it's within 21 hexes, easy, easy, easily within command. Then we go to 18th Army, and we can look at 18th Army here. 18th uh, Army Group North has a command radius of 45. 18th Army is within 11 of it. Okay, perfect. Then we go down to the core headquarters and an army has a command radius of 15. And you see that right there. First core is within five hexes of the army headquarters. And so it's well within command there, five of 15. And then if we go all the way down to the division level, core headquarters have a command radius of five. This division is four hexes away from it. So it is within command with the one wrinkle of all of this being if this division is attached to the army headquarters it only gets certain bonuses if it's within five regardless of the army army group okh you name it whatever their command radius is they will only give certain leadership bonuses if they were, are within five hexes of the division the actual combat unit on the ground okay and so that's the you know basic command structure now let's go look at generals all right so we've got a general here this again is Walter modal we can left click on the general lieutenant Walter modal general lieutenant remember are perfectly suited to command core headquarters that is what their real you know that, that's their sweet spot they could go up a level but they may lose some ratings here all right or they could potentially uh, command something lower there's nothing lower than the core headquarters so uh, moto can only go up from here uh all right now then, what are we seeing over here on the left-hand side? Well, every general in the game has seven main ratings, all right? They are political, morale, initiative, admin, mech, infantry, and air. Okay, we'll get back to those in one second. They also tally victories and defeats for that general, and those actually are important. They can uh, sometimes get promoted if they win a lot. They could get demoted if they lose a lot. They could get executed, <laughs> seriously, if they lose enough. Um, and so wins and losses and who gets credit for that actually becomes somewhat important. They do have restrictions. And I wanna talk about the restrictions very quickly. And that is ground only, all right? ground only uh means what it says he can only command an infantry unit all right or or he can only command infantry units uh or in a core that is in an infantry 
division. He cannot command any mechanized units, all right? He could not command directly. He could not get into an SS command headquarters. Now, right now, there are no SS command headquarters on the map, uh, but he is regular German army ground only, all right? And now I look at this and I say, holy smokes, I think I said something incorrect. Generals can go up two levels, it seems, because it says his max command is army group. Well, one level above him right now is army. All right. Well, army group is two levels above him. He's at the core. Army would be one. Army group is two. So obviously I got that just right. I think I got that backwards. They can go up two and down one. All right. So there's nowhere for him to go down. Like I said, he can only go up, but in this case it is, they can go up too. So apologies for that, but that's okay uh, because ultimately the game will tell you their max command right here. So regardless of what I've told you, you could go right here and find out exactly what someone's max command is. Dismissal cost. We'll get to that in just one second. Now, what are some of these restrictions? You can have ground only, you could have a general that can do air and ground. You could have a general that's SS only. You could have a general that is air only. All right, we don't have any of these air commands up now, uh, but we could put them up and let's go see if any of the commanders here, uh, oh, we got to go to the Luftflotte level. Hey, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Let's go to Luftflotte 2. How about that? Uh, right click here. Oh gosh, I can't see him from this screen. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's go back to Luftflotte 1 because now I really want to find this. Uh, what? Gosh, Darty's way down here. Uh, yep, I guess I can't see it until we get back to the air planning phase. Oh! Interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't see it anywhere over here. Okay, well, these do have air commanders. Uh, I guess we can only see those in the air planning phase. Hey, I, I learned through these tutorials as well. So you have these various restrictions on commanders, and they can only be assigned to that. I mean, ultimately, the game would not allow you to assign one of these, you know, for instance, modal, you could not go put him in an air command. The game wouldn't allow it. So restrictions, max command. All right, let's go up to these ratings. Now these ratings run anywhere from one to nine. And why are they important? Well, the game runs thousands of checks every turn. And that's true. I mean, you know, I, I have not seen the actual al algorithm. But, you know, the developers of the game, they say that over and over. It runs thousands of checks on all aspects of everything that happens to combat units out here, to the headquarters themselves, um, and everything that are commanded, you know, all the way up to the Army, Army Group, OKH level. It runs thousands and thousands of checks, all right? And it does. It really, it, it, it goes into logistics into the combat values, down to missing when you fire, how often your elements can fire. It goes into all of that. So the ratings run from one to nine. And when I say dice rolls, what happens is the game rolls a 10-sided die, essentially, and it passes if it's this number or lower. Okay, if I guess in this case, if modal, if, they, if the game rolled a 10, he would fail. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, he's obviously a very, very good general nine, eight, seven, seven, nine, you know, it doesn't get, it doesn't get better than that because these ratings only run from one to nine. They don't give somebody a 10 because they want there to be a chance that maybe he had a bad day. <laughs> and so, you know, his rate, he, he failed, uh, one time out of 10, uh, but these run one to nine. Okay. What is political? Political goes into the amount of AP up here that it costs to replace this general. It also goes into promotion and demotions 
uh, decisions. And just think of it as how much does the Nazi leadership like this guy? Uh, you know, how much in favor with Hitler is Modal? Uh, does he look out there? Well, right now, I, you know, it could, it could be based simply on the fact that that person is a, you know, a Nazi party member in good standing. That may raise his political level. It could be because he's winning a lot of battles, right? It's not always just, you know, how good of a Nazi you are. It could be because he's 8-0 in battle right now. He's got eight wins, zero losses. So politically, he's a nine. It doesn't get better than that. All right. Or worse for you, because ultimately you would rather this political score probably be low uh, unless he's a really good general, because if he starts to lose some battles, he may get executed if the political score is low or he may get demoted. The game will automatically promote and demote generals sometimes. Now you can uh, replace them if you want, you can put them in different commands, but sometimes the game does that automatically uh, and you have no control over it. It's not like there's a button you can press or something. Uh, you know, if he starts losing a bunch of battles, Hitler may just replace him or OKH, whoever makes the decision may just replace him or demote him or have him executed. OK, so that's political. Morale is probably, again, the chief and most important statistic in the game. A division's morale has the biggest effect on its uh, ability to wage war, its combat effectiveness. And so there's all kinds of roles that uh, go to the general that he has to pass for them to do certain things. And those would be, what is the combat value of the unit? So let's say it's normally a 10 and he fails a roll. It may only be an eight this turn, right? Now, next turn, he may pass that roll and it's a 10 again. But this turn, it may only be an eight because he failed the morale roll. Um, so it's combat value, win and loss credit, all right? So win and loss credit would be uh, if you have two different cores participating in a battle. Let's just say this division was down here trying to take Peskov, right? And it's mainly Lindemann's divisions out here fighting, but this division got into the scrap. Um, if uh, Modal's morale score is higher and we win this battle, it's very likely that Modal will get credit for that. And you may say, oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Well, that's how the game works. And it's based on morale. Now, you may say that could potentially be based on political, but they decided to do it by morale. So win-loss credit generally goes to the general um, in command, if there are two or more, that has the highest morale score. Uh, fatigue his morale score will affect fatigue. So we get to the end of the turn, they run the logistics phase, they determine the fatigue of these units or how much fatigue has uh, accrued, and um, they will do a morale check, a leader check on morale to see whether they get a bunch of that uh, fatigue, you know, reduced or less of it reduced. That's all based on morale score and rallying routed units. So you see a routed unit here for the Soviets. The game will check against its leader to see if this unit rallies. All right. And so they become very important, especially on the defensive, as you get units routed, or if you're the Soviets at the start, you get units routed. These routed units, for them to rally and reform, it goes to the morale score of their general. All right. Initiative initiative now that has to do with movement points and so based on certain initiative rules a unit can have more or less of its base movement points in a turn if it's normally 16 and it's fully in supply and fully in fuel so it would have 16 but the general fails the initiative check it may only have 15 or 14 all right and so initiative uh, has to do with movement points. It has to do with the ability of the elements underneath in these divisions to fire, whether they fire or not, and whether that firing results in a hit or not. And you may say, gosh, I didn't know that the game modeled things down to this level. It does. It does. It does every single volley back and forth. And so that's where these thousands of checks come in, right, is it will be checking this initiative score all the time to see whether a unit can fire 
and when it does fire, did it hit its intended target? Um, what else? Uh, reducing casualties by reconnaissance and force. And this is a very important concept. Sometimes you do not have perfect information on an opponent or an enemy unit, and you attack it anyway, especially as the Germans, right? You're trying to move as fast as you can. One advantage you really have as the Germans is they have a lot of generals with good initiative score. And this is where this comes into effect is you do this attack. If the general starts to get into this battle and says, wait a minute, this unit is a lot stronger than I thought, they will do what's called reconnaissance in force, meaning they, the units, the elements went out here and it said, whoop, nope, we don't like those odds. And they return for a lot less in losses. Okay, if you have a really bad general that fails the initiative roll, they'll attack and they'll keep attacking no matter what this, let's say it has a 50 defensive value here and we have a 14 offensive combat value and we're just gonna get chewed up. If you have a really a general with a really good initiative score, they will go out here, the units or the elements will, and they'll turn right back around and maybe you only lose, let's say 15 men or something, as opposed to 500. That is initiative score it really determines that. Admin score, that goes into movement points again. That also goes into logistics. It goes into how much damage gets repaired. So as your elements get damaged, how many can return to ready status? That is admin, all right? Below that, you have the three combat scores, okay? And combat scores really are what you think they are. They are the ability the combat value on the counter, you know, how much actual offensive and defensive combat value can be affected by their combat roles, uh, the general's combat roles. Um, also, uh, oh, the ability to fire and hit. Now we were talking about that with initiative. Uh, that also comes with their combat score. And we've got mech, infantry, and air. Okay, mech, this is, this is directly relevant if this general is commanding motorized forces. In this case, modal is not. He's commanding infantry. And how would you know that? Well, you go out here to the division. Now, you know he, direct, he directly reports to an infantry command, the 18th Army. But you could also look here and see non-motorized, all right? Uh, so these are all infantry, non-motorized. Obviously, if we go down here to the Panzers, uh, we can go here and see armored, click on here, motorized. But just as a general rule, it's always gonna be the Panzer groups and all of the core headquarters underneath them right here, command motorized units or mech units. And armies, things that are in armies and core headquarters that are in armies are infantry or ground units, all right? So let's just see who this is. I don't know who this is. Von Brockdorf Allfelt, all right. He's got a five political, so he's not really that political. Uh, or, you know, he's 14 and six. Well, early in the war, that's not great. Uh, and maybe that's, you know, affecting this a little bit. Uh, morale's a five, initiative's a six, admin's a five. His mech is a three. Not good at all, but he really is an infantry general. And you see here, ground only. And he can um, command corps and army headquarters. Well, now this is interesting, right? Because he is a general level. And it's so showing that he can do core and army headquarters. So I say, throw out that general rule that's in the manual and look here. What's their max command? It will just tell you here. So remembering some general rule that I obviously got wrong or the manual has wrong, uh, just throw that out the window. Uh, core and army. Okay, well, he's, he's in charge of a core, so that works. His dismissal cost is lower. It's only a seven. It's lower than modals. Uh, probably because his political score is only a five. Modal is a nine. And so that lowers the cost of replacing him. So let's continue on here with modal a little bit, uh, just for a moment. And look at this, he's a nine infantry. All right, so his mech score doesn't really matter uh, here because he is commanding an infantry unit. All right, 
great. Um, now, he could do a mechanized unit. Ground only means it could be either infantry or mechanized. Uh, ground and air. So it's, it, you know, ground only. Don't think of that as only being infantry. It could be infantry or mechanized. Um, and then you've got air. So you've either got, the, you know, these units or air units. That's it. Um, but let's hit dismissal cost. So he's got a high political. Okay. Um, and it says you must have 14. Oh, shoot. I'm playing a game that doesn't have enough admin points. Well, holy smokes. All right. There's actually quite a bit more to cover here. So when we come back next time, we're going to do part two because I want to talk about how this command structure ultimately works for a lot of these roles. We're also just going to, you know, kind of talk about how changing generals, how that works, some of the changes you might want to make when you're first starting the game. But we'll do all of that next time. So thank you for joining me. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Have a good one.